Okay, so let's get started with the uh, hollow point deceiver. I've been tying a few of these lately, uh, just working on uh, some bucktail technique and uh, kind of like the way this one turns out. Um, could be used as a, a pike fly, um, smaller musky fly, uh, or depending on your color combinations, um, a good streamer for brown trout and as well as uh, king salmon in the uh, late summer on the Great Lakes, uh, king salmon will, will chase down a big flashy streamer, particularly in this color combination, which is gonna be fire tiger. Um, so I've got uh, the Allen SW004. Um, on the website, this is their size one. I know it's labeled three aught. Um, but this is actually, um, if you go to buy them, this is the biggest size they make, which is a size one. Um, I don't know if they changed their sizing specifications on how it's labeled or, you know, if it was just mislabeled, but um, it's the biggest SW004 that they make. Um, so I've got that loaded on the vise. I'm using GSP thread. You obviously don't have to use that. It's just what I had handy. And I'm gonna start with uh, a couple of big orange grizzly hackles. Um, I try and pull them from opposite sides of the saddle. That's like a, you know, a half or even a quarter saddle, so I don't know that I have um, the opposite sides to go with, so I just got two that line up almost perfectly together. Um, I put them so that they stay together, almost in a straight line like that. Uh, you could turn them so that they splay away from each other, but uh, um, on this particular fly, I tend to treat them as one, you know, one feather. So for length, um, I'm gonna go pretty long here. Uh, probably about the length, you know, this is gonna be a, a jointed fly, so an articulated fly, both body sections on the same hook. So what I'm looking for is at least the length of the fly, what it will end up being off the back, maybe even a little bit more. So, um, you know, a solid probably three to four inches off the back, because um, I'm, I'm trying to make this six to seven inches long um, uh, on this articulated version. So to tie these in and keep them straight on top of the, you want to tie them in right on top of the hook, uh, and then they'll sit in um, and they'll stay aligned how they are now. Uh, so I'm just going to pinch those right on top of the hook. Uh, I'm going to spin my my thread to kind of coil it up. I'm going to do a loose wrap and a second loose wrap, and then I'm going to kind of just slightly tighten it down and then make sure the stems stay directly on top. So I kind of pull them up here and then tighten it down and wrap. I'm probably at about the halfway point of uh, the hook shank and I keep a hold of it until I know I've got it good and wrapped in and then when I let go these will stay uh, right there on top of the fly the way they're supposed to and then I can trim away the butt ends of those feathers. So we've got the tail tied in, as simple as that. Uh, you can do any number of things here. You could tie in your flash at this point, your tail flash. Um, what I'm gonna do is tie in uh, my, my one set of bucktail here and then put flash over the top of that um, so that the flash kinda has a little bit of presence up and over the tail as opposed to just riding right along the tail. Um, you could do it either way. I don't know that it makes a huge difference. Um, so for this, I am going to pull off my chartreuse bucktail. Um, I'm kind of in the middle, or at the you know mid or even the lower third of, of the bucktail, and I'm gonna get a good uh, pencil size, I guess, if you want to call it that. Uh, this fly is tied fairly sparse, I guess, uh, for how much profile it's going to end up having. Um, so you don't need a ton. And I'm running a little bit low on my chartreuse bucktail, so uh, I'm going to kind of 
kind of pick through this a little bit. Um, but I'm tying in this bucktail basically at, at full length, but I'm gonna uh, reverse tie it and fold it over uh, and then tie it down. So you kind of see how I'm doing that. And the, the goal here is to hollow tie this, uh, is how I'm doing this. Um, I want the back portion to have the flattest profile, and then I'm gonna slowly open up that profile on the front hook. Um, so I'm gonna uh, start by uh, reverse tying this in, and then uh, I'll show you how I'm getting the profile that I want. So I'm gonna tie these in pretty much at full length, because when I, once I double this over, I kinda want the, the hair to come out you know, maybe halfway, uh, if the tips are about halfway on the tail. That's kind of how I want it. Um, and I'm going to tie this pretty close to the, the front of the hook um, and get that in here. So for that, again, I'm spinning my thread counterclockwise. I've got one loop, two loose wraps, and then once I have the two loose wraps with just a little bit of tension, I'm going to wrap the deer hair or the bucktail around the hook and then once it's evenly spread now I can really tighten this down and you'll see because I'm tying down at the real butt end of this bucktail I get a little bit of flare uh, if you tie this bucktail in short uh, the hair won't flare because the only the butts are hollow uh, and so you'll get uh, not quite as much flare if you um, try and get this any shorter. So the, the better way to go is to, if you want shorter bucktail, is to find shorter pieces of hair on your your uh, your bucktail so that you can get a little bit of flare out of it. Um, some will flare more than others, but uh, typically if you're tying in close to the butt, you'll get at least a little bit of flare. Um, so I've got that in there. Um, I like to do because I'm using GSP I'll put a quick uh, two or three turn whip finish here and a little bit of glue if you had a stickier thread you probably wouldn't need to do that um, but before you put that whip finish in and really tighten it down make sure you've got good coverage all around your hook and uh, this one looks pretty good uh, so I could put in a little drop of glue here just to keep things where they're at. There's that. And then you can trim these butts a little bit too if you want, just to kind of clean this up. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're, when you reverse this in, it's going to cover everything up pretty good. Um, and then the tool of choice here is probably going to be a empty uh, pen tube. Uh, I don't have one with me, so this is a, a metal piece to a small deer hair stacker. Uh, it's not perfect for this, but it does the trick. Uh, so you just kind of want to get in here as best you can and fold everything back. And uh, sometimes you got to take a little bit of finagling to get this. And I have some shorter hairs that are falling out should be okay. And once you get it as captured as you can, get a couple of wraps in here until you can get the hair totally controlled. And then what I'm doing now is just some nice tight wraps wrapping back. Now on a true hollow fly, you would just keep wrapping this back until and building up a little dam here to hold the hair back at the profile you want it. You could certainly do that, um, but this back piece, I want my profile relatively flat. Uh, so what I'm actually gonna do is wrap, just catch the butts of these if I can, um, and uh, actually wrap over the top of this. And this is kind of tricky sometimes, um, especially with GSP. Because you want to get it, so it's, I can, it's easy to grab it back here, but I don't really want to grab it there. I want to grab it closer to the head. Uh, so sometimes if you get a little bit more of your dam built here, um, it gets a little bit easier to catch it right at the end. And uh, 
spinning your thread helps. Holding this back as flat and compressed as possible helps. And then trying to slowly tighten this right at the end. It's where a different thread might uh, come in handy. And, uh, of course, I'm not getting it. There we go. Now we caught it. So now that it's caught, you can kind of pull everything back and then cinch this down and I'll get just a little bit of flare here as well. Uh, so you can see even with wrapping that back and tying over the top of it, I still have a, a nice big profile. Um, but uh, you'll see as we get to the head that this is uh, just about perfect for what we're looking for. So I'm gonna wrap that in, give myself a, another couple turns on a whip finish. And then now I'm going to tie in my flash um, after a little bit of super glue. Uh, so on this back portion, uh, you could certainly blend some uh, a few different uh, mer or flash boos here, but I'm just going to put in Fire Tiger flash boo since this is a, a Fire Tiger fly. And I want probably just, I don't know, four or five strands at full length. I'm gonna cut that off. And I'm just gonna tie these. You can put a little taper in it if you want, um, just so they're not all the same length, so that they kind of, they don't stick to each other. And then at the halfway point, I'm gonna just tie this in down the side. It's cool if these go basically all the way back to the end of your tail, however long. You can always trim them later, but I kind of just want these down the side. And uh, then wrap this and tie it in along the other side. And then once that's good, quick whip finish and this back half is done I'll just put a, probably another little drip of glue here just to keep that flash tied in and that's the back half of this fly pretty easy just one station of bucktail and uh, we've got good profile started we've got some flash started and uh, a nice grizzly hackle tail so um, I'm gonna get the front hook loaded and We'll start up again. Okay, so now I got the front hook ready to go. Um, I've got some wire bite. I've got a couple of uh, articulation beads. I'm gonna put. Uh, I'm using two on this one because it's a longer fly, so I, I want a little bit of separation between the hooks, um, and they're pretty short shanked hooks uh, for this. So I, I want to build a little length into the fly. So I've got two beads strung on to my wire bite and then I'm going to put my back hook on there and then once that's on there I'll wrap it over and I'll go back through the holes in the beads and once you got that just center it up on the on the wire so you can tie it in That, and we're ready to tie it in. Um, so you could definitely tie this in right on top um, of the hook. I actually am tying it in how I tie in my uh, hooks on Game Changers, which is running this wire down the side of the, the shank of the hook. So I get a couple wraps in and then pull this so that the bead is just butting up against the bend in the hook. And then I kind of tighten it down and uh, wrap back, make sure that that's not extending too far back here or else it'll follow, follow up easier. So I just keep this with no twist in that articulation wire and I wrap right back to, you know, just leaving a little bit of gap, a um, little bit of play uh, 
in front of the bead. And then I wrap this down the side of the shank all the way forward to just about where I'm going to tie in my last bunch of bucktail. And then I fold it over and run it down the other side, uh, run it back down the other side. And I'll probably have to trim these a little bit so that they don't get in the way. One trimmed, two trimmed, and then I'll just finish this off. And uh, my first bunch of bucktails, not going to be super far back on the shank here. I'm going to come up just a little bit and uh, tie this in um, uh, this next bunch of bucktail. So I'm going to grab about the same amount, pencils worth or however you want to measure that. That's going to be your biggest thing is figuring out how much bucktail is too much, uh, especially at the head of the fly where we're using two colors, um, you know, because you kind of have to judge the split between the two colors. Um, but just, you know, you have to just kind of experiment with it and figure out, you know, what works for you as far as uh, getting the right profile you want and just ease of tying it in and everything. So I want about the same length these fibers to be about the same length as the first set that that went in so I'm kinda just measuring the tips here up against my tie-in point and then I'm gonna grab uh, right at that spot it should be about the same length because I'm coming off a similar spot on the um, bucktail so again just a couple of loose wraps I'm gonna repeat the same process once I have those loose wraps in, just keep slight pressure and get the, the fibers moving around the hook with good coverage. You can spin your vise if you have a rotary vise and see where you're at. And then once you think you have it, go ahead and tighten that down. You can see the hair does, is flaring a little bit for me and actually spinning a little bit. So get that tightened, secured in there, and uh, again, a couple turn whip finish, just mostly because it's GSP and it tends to to loosen up on you if you don't if you don't put a whip finish in there. So now that that's in. Trim these butts so they're not interfering with the articulation wire. Make sure you don't cut your articulation wire at this point. <laughs> there we are. You could put a little glue in there if you wanted. I'll, I might just wait till the end on this um, after I get this tied in. So then we're going to use the same tool to fold this back over. Grab the hair, try to really pinch that in there as much as possible. When you're back by the hook bend, it makes it a little harder. Um, I'm going to get a couple of wraps up here, and then that'll help control the hair so you can pull it back. Now, I kind of try and decide at this point whether I'm just going to hollow tie this uh, and just keep you know building up a thread dam to push this back or if I want to wrap over the top again. Um, this piece was flaring pretty good so I'm not worried about wrapping over the top and getting the profile too flat like this. Um, so I could spend a ton of wraps to get this you know to the uh, the profile that I want. Uh, which is, you know, this just to be a little bit opened up further than the first station. Um, you know, so I could wrap that back on itself. Um, but what I think I'm going to do, since I did get a fair amount of flare when I tied this in, is I'm going to do the same procedure that I did on uh, the first station here and it should uh, open up nicely. Just gonna try and control this here. It's harder 
back at this point, and I want to just again catch this. And harder to do with the hook point right in your way. just got it and and that actually worked out perfectly um because i caught it really close to the edge which will allow this to rather than send it super flat it will flare up when i pull tight so you can see that that profile um the vice is kind of in the way of the bottom of it but that profile is slightly more open than the first post that's kind of a good tip in and of itself um, the farther back into the hair that you pinch this down with that catching wrap the flatter the profile is going to be so on that back station you don't have to worry as much about it because you're looking for a flatter profile but if you're gonna trap those hairs down on the reverse tie on your second station you want it to be closer to the edge um, so that it, it flares it up a little bit more. Okay, so um, you have kind of a choice here. It depends on how sparse you want to tie this fly and how far back you start uh, on this front hook. So I could have started a little bit forward from here and then just uh, wrapped some some polar chenille and a contrasting color up to my front station and just done this with two station stations of bucktail on the front hook. Um, I tied this in kind of far back and uh, so I'm gonna put in one more station of chartreuse bucktail uh, then some flash and then uh, a couple wraps of that polar chenille just to give some red contrast in the body and then I'm gonna wrap my front uh, station of bucktail and then some more flash and some hackle up there. So I'm going to grab a, another similar sized pencil of chartreuse bucktail and I'm going to tie that in basically the same way. Um, getting this extra station up here is not a bad thing. If anything, you know, you want to build more bulk into this fly at the head. So um, you know, having the stations closer together on this front hook isn't, uh, isn't a bad thing. Um, so I'm just going to, uh, tie this in the same way. I'm going to come forward just a little bit and, uh, tie this in. And again, about the same, the same length, uh, and then the same technique to get this in there. Two loose wraps, get it working around the hook. Check where we're at. That looks pretty good, so then I'm going to tighten this down. <clears throat> good wraps in here and then same thing with a couple turn whip finish tighten it trim our butts out so they're not knocking down the, the profile of the last post Just go around real quick and trim that Again, just reverse this in there. Fold that over. I mean, you just want this profile to open up as you as you move forward. So you're gonna kind of have to try and make that same uh, decision here as you did on the last post. Do I want to um, just hollow tie this in, or do I need to um, 
get a, a pinching wrap on the head of this is that going to give you the right amount of flare so get my couple of wraps in front of this to help control the hair really pull this back I'm going to see what uh, building up a dam here looks like. I'm just going to put some nice compressed turns of thread right up against that bucktail and then see what the flare looks like. I think it's a little bit over flared and I got some, some long hairs in here that are a little bit too, you know, longer than the rest of them. Trying to get this hair controlled a little bit, so I'm gonna wrap back. I don't think uh, I'm gonna get enough flare by pinching this back, but uh, I might try it just to see where I'm at if I can do it quickly here. Got that pinched, pull it down. It actually doesn't look bad. It's kind of using the previous station as a prop, so uh, it's kind of just bleeding into that that same station. Um, you yeah, know, so that doesn't look too bad. It's probably not ideal. Again, like I said, you you don't really even need this station in there, but it's not a bad thing. Uh, so I'll get a quick whip finish and put some glue in here. And uh, what I'm going to do over the top of this is kind of an overwing and just to blend some different flash into this fly is I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put four or five strands of chartreuse flashaboo. Um, you know, fire tiger pattern is going to typically have chartreuse orange, yellow, and, and maybe a, a darker green. Um, I'm, I'm not blending the yellow into this body um at all and I, I don't have any darker green bucktail so what i'm gonna do is is put a dark green flash kind of over the top of the head of this fly and i'm gonna start that process right here with this uh chartreuse marabou which is darker than my chartreuse bucktail so tie that in at the halfway point and then just fold the rest back and that'll just kind of darken up the top of this fly and act as a substitute for the um, darker green bucktail that you might normally use and then just trim my my flash there so I've got a little flash over wing it's getting washed out with my with my light but you can kind of see that going over the top there um, so some glue And we're going to start on the front post. Okay, so we're ready for the front post. I've moved my thread just maybe half of a eyelid behind, eyelet length behind the hook eye. And uh, this front station is going to be two colors. Um, it's going to be chartreuse on the top, orange on the bottom. So I'm going to look for, try and find one more. Uh, portion of chartreuse uh, on my bucktail here um, and I don't need quite as much because I'm grabbing two colors to cover this hook so I've got maybe it's still it's a little bit more than half it's probably two-thirds of what I was grabbing before because again I'm building bulk as I come towards the head here um, so I've, I've grabbed probably about two-thirds of what I had in there before and uh, I'm going to even up these butts by just kind of trimming out the uneven parts because I want to tie this in. Um, I need the length here because I'm running out of decent bucktail. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this on the top and, uh, and tie it in and just keep it on the top. So this time I'm going to put my two loose wraps in, one, two, and when I pull down, I'm going to 
keep my fingers here so that this does not spin around the, the hook shank at all. So pull that down, get another wrap in there, and keep it on the top of the hook. Get some wraps. And you want to keep this up there because you want some good separation between your two colors. Um, this top color, if you get it, you know, around most of the hook shank and just leave the bottom open, that's ideal. Uh, you know, so then the bottom color just kind of shows up as a throat uh, for you and doesn't, uh, you know, overtake the head of the fly. Um, so I think we're looking okay here. Just a little bit of super glue so that it doesn't spin. And then I'm going to grab a pinch of orange, about the same amount. this upside down and you can see here that my chartreuse hair is all pretty much on top of the hook and then I'm going to take with my orange I'm going to measure this out so that it's the same length as my chartreuse and that's going to be where I want to tie this in um, so I'm going to grab this here and then again a couple loose wraps just to keep it on this side of the hook pull down tight and get a couple wraps in and uh, continue to, to pull that tight and then uh, another quick two turn whip just to keep things where they need to be and then I can put another little dab of glue here and trim my butts out and then I'll be ready to finish this head which I'm gonna do in just a second Okay, so I put a little uh, glue on here and uh, trim the butt section, so I'm going to fold this back. And this one I am just going to hollow tie, uh, so I'm just going to keep uh, wrapping this back uh, with tight wraps to build up a, a thread dam to push this back to the profile that I want it to be in. So I'm going to just get a couple of wraps here. Um, it's a little bit trickier when you've got it tied in like this to keep control of the hair at first. So you really got to grab it and kind of pull back on it and get your get your start without trapping too much hair. And once you get a few wraps, it, it starts to cooperate a little bit better. some backward pressure on the thread trying to wrap back and it might not seem like it's going to work but it will eventually start to push this profile back to a workable position. pretty close there um, to, to getting it into a good spot profile wise. So I'm going to take a few more, you know, 10 wraps or so and really try and knock this down. 10, 12, 15 wraps and then that's probably going to be pretty good right there. So then to finish this off, um, I've, I'm going to put in a few more uh, of the Fire Tiger flashaboo down the sides, so you know, four or five strands down the sides, just how we did on the back hook. Grab that, tie it right on the sides. 
sides. each of these flash materials I'm trying to move that thread back to push that profile where I want it. Uh, so that flashes in. Then I'm going to tie in uh, some dark green crystal flash on top. Again this is to take the place of my uh, dark green bucktail that you would probably normally tie on this that I don't have. Um, so I'm going to tie this in to halfway point if I can and then fold it back and I want this to, to stay on top of the fly here. So grab that pinch it. So that's in there on the top of the fly, good coverage on the top of the fly with that. And on the bottom of the fly, I'm going to put in some orange crystal flash, just a few strands, um, just to add a little bit of flash to the bottom of this fly. And I'm going to do that the same way as that I tied in the top. I'm just going to try and get one or two wraps here without crowding the eye too much. Tilt up the angle. Hook is sliding a little bit in the vise. Just one more thing to put in. Again, this is just ex this all this stuff at the head here is just extra, and you can see me kind of building up a little bit of a uh, bulky head here. Uh, we should have just enough to make this look good. I'm going to put in a couple of this is straw yellow uh, hackle tips um, that I'm going to tie in kind of uh, um, intruder style over the top and. Again, this is not necessary at all with all this flash. It's more for me than than function. You know, the fish probably aren't going to see this with all the the flash that's there. So I'm going to tie one in on this side and get uh, the other one in on this side if I can. thread back to the base of the head here. Got a couple of wraps in there, make sure it's in a decent spot. That looks pretty good. Fold everything back, clean up the head a little bit without building up too much wrap wise and then give myself a whip finish. There we go. And that's going to be it for this fly. I'll uh, put some glue on here so it doesn't all come apart. And this is the, the hollow tide deceiver, um, kind of a cross between a hollow, uh, hollow fly 
where everything's hollow, reverse tied and hollow tied back and, and, and more sparse than this fly and a typical, um, what I'm used to tying, like Great Lakes Deceiver, uh, where you are not reverse and hollow tying the deer hair, you're just putting it on and, you know, kind of building profile, um, just with uh, tying it in the standard way instead of reverse tying. This lets me, if I want to make this really sparse, I can, um, you know, sparser than this version. Uh, or I can, you know, build a bulkier version like this and I can really get a big profile. And you'll see as I pull this out, I'll try and give you a view from the front, that, uh, you know, this, this fly holds this profile uh, really well, uh, but it's still relatively light. Um, it could be tied lighter than this. And, still have this big profile, but I like a little bit of bulk in the head on these flies so they push some water. Um, especially in this color, uh, the fire tiger is a, a king salmon fly for me, so I want it to push water uh, and uh, really you know, cause a disturbance in the water to, to make a, a king salmon that's not eating because it's hungry, angry enough with this fly to bite it. So that's kind of my plan with it. Um, but they're, they're good smallmouth flies, they're good pike flies. You know, this thing at, you know, six, seven inches at least. Um, you know, this tail might even extend to eight inches, I'm not sure. You know, there's a good um, pike and musky fly as well. So turn this light off, see if I can get a little better feel for the flash and sparkle now that my light's not washing the colors out. Um, but that's, uh, that's the hollow deceiver.